So in the last video, we made these two very custom kitchen cabinets, but they still obviously need a little bit of work. Yeah, so today we're gonna to make a start on filling all the gaps and sanding them back. Then we'll make all the doors and the drawers and then finish it off by painting the whole lot. So it was a very custom construction, but we've basically got an L-shaped kitchen going on in there. This is going to be against the bulkhead wall. So this one is going to be a drawer pull out for shoes and things like that. And there's going to be a seat on the top, which is pretty cool. Then we've got a pull out pantry we've got to make. It's going to have, hopefully, if it fits, all of our plates and cups and stuff like that. Uh, this is where the oven sits, the cooker. And then probably two drawers underneath for pans and things. And on this side, which is going to be the corner one, this is the quite awkward one to get into. But this is a shelf just in here, and then this is going to be a cupboard door here and here. And then the sink goes on top here. We've got a cutlery drawer and probably a utensil drawer underneath. <laughs> really two quite small drawers there if we can make that work. Maybe even a tiny little drawer going through there as well. And then the last thing about this is we've just got these lift up compartments there. Because our diesel heater is under there on this one. And we've also got space for possibly pumps and things like that. Maybe a bit of storage, we haven't decided yet. So yeah, let's get cracking. It's just got a few little voids in there. So that's why we're going to fill those and just make it look a lot neater from the front, especially. It's nice that we've got a sunny day for this part, isn't it? It's been raining every other day. That's a good look you've got going on there. Sanding is a messy job. <laughs> <sighs> That's it for today, I think. Got a little bit dark. Carry on tomorrow. More sanding. Yay. Here we go. Ooh. I think that is all the sanding done finally. Yep. Have you said this one looks a bit like a hamster run? It's got so many holes in it. <laughs> so we're going to get started with making our shoe drawer, which is going to be this one here. Um, and we're going to make it in the same sort of style as these ones, which we've already done. These are 12mm birch ply though, so we're not going to be using that. A, because it's quite heavy, and B, because we don't have any of that. So what we've got is a mixture of pieces of our old floor from the van original, and some pieces of leftover 9mm birch ply. So I think what we're going to do is make the shoe drawer out of this one, and then save this for the drawers that need a bit more sturdiness. Using up all the scraps. Yeah. It's quite satisfying though, isn't it? Because it's going to be used back in the van again, no wastage. Yeah, just needs a bit of clean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
we're at the point where we need to cut this giant piece of floor down. And yeah, the wind's about to pick up. It's already not great, so. All right, that's more like it. Get some more drawers made. measurement for the drawers we're doing the sides to be the exact length of the draw slide so that is 35 centimeters for that one so we've got a side piece that goes in there like that and then another one on the other side and then to get the length of the front and back pieces going along there um, what we need to do is take into account the size of the draw runner and the wall piece there so we just need that dimension and that's one we've already cut so hopefully this should nicely fit in like this. Something like that. And then what we need to do is just make the bottoms for it. And we're gonna make those out of the six mil birch ply, which is really nice and strong, and should be able to hold the weight of the patterns. And then we'll route those into the bottom of the little groove as well. In exactly the same way we did on these two here. Yes, yeah, quite nice actually, if these ones are going really quickly for a change. Yeah. I'm a bit like that. Like a new piece of wood. It's a bit better. <laughs> <laughs> So that is all of our drawers put together, glued, pinned, wood filled, apart from this tall one here, which is what we're about to get cracking on with now. So, this is the interesting one. Yeah. <laughs> Should be quite a fun one though as well. We were thinking this one is like, it's a bit of an awkward shape because it's only about 14 centimetres width. And what we're thinking is, we might have some like spices, a few cups, pint glasses and stuff like that and we're just trying to figure out how we can get that all in so that when you pull it out it looks quite it's quite usable so we reckon that we can get five spice jars obviously this will be upright like that and they just fit in the space of that draw runner which is pretty nice and that's a 35 centimeter draw runner and then also which is very nice the width of the space we've got is 14 centimeters which is about that so we should be able to get another layer as well so we nice. can get nice 10 spice rack holder thing there which is pretty <laughs> cool and then we've got to have obviously space for teacups that's really important so if we move down to this section that will be their kind of shelf for that and then we reckon we can get just about four teacups in here probably can do it a bit higher yeah a little bit you want to have space to be able to get them out obviously yeah and they can only fit we worked out if they go alternating like this because there's not quite enough space <laughs> in that way so they have to go kind of bunched up a little bit together and then two wine glasses two pint glasses just under here like that and we just need to obviously fix them in so they're not going to rattle around and clank and break and stuff when we're driving and possibly even tiny little shelf bit at the bottom as well we're not sure you have to put it together and see how much space we got it's going to be um yeah quite a nice nice drawer if we can pull it off yeah and we've decided to go for drawer runners at the top and the bottom rather than on the side because if we put them on the side it would make our space even narrower so that is why in here we've already put two rails one at the top there 
and one at the bottom for us to be able to screw our drawer on us to. Right. Oh my god. ready to glue. I think this is the most elaborate piece of woodwork we've done so far. How many pieces there are? How many did we count? Uh, I think there's 29, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Turned out it took some doing, but yeah. <laughs> it's nice that everything just fits, and we didn't even have to turn the cups around in the end, which is pretty cool as well. Yeah, I do love how you can get 12 spices up here. Yeah, we thought it was only 10, but actually, perfectly fits two rows of six. Well, I'm proud of us. Yeah, I like that one, it's really cool. <laughs> now we can start doing some dry fitting for our drawers and putting the runners on. Unfortunately what we've discovered straight away is um, the gap here is bigger than the gap up here which can only really mean that we've made these just a little bit too short which oh, is very annoying. really annoying. These together so like one on either side would fit in there like that but at the top definitely not going to work so yeah we'll have to fix that before we can carry on just one of those things there we go that's quite a lot of work at least we know the glue and pins is quite strong <laughs>
Right, we're just gonna do that another uh, six times, I think. It's a lot of draws. <laughs> So one of the trickiest parts about doing the draws this time was basically getting the right screws. So finding the right screws for everything always seems to be a massive pain. And the ones we originally bought for this are absolutely tiny. So I don't know what we were thinking we got these. But yeah, if we get one of those out, try and put them in here. And they're literally so small that they just go straight through. So obviously that was never going to work. But the tricky part is because there's such thin material here all of the screws that we had before wouldn't work. So what we needed was something that's got a fairly thick head, but still really small screw. So only, I think it's an eight millimeter screw because this is eight, this is 12 millimeters. So you see there, it just works on the cabinet side, but on the drawer boxes, uh, these are only actually seven mil, I think. So when you put them in here on the edge, it's a little bit too close to comfort. So what we did after a lot of searching around was we got these, Again, ridiculously tiny, quite cute little washers. So just for the drawer side, these are exactly the right size to fit on there. And then that gives us a tiny bit of extra buffer so that when we put the screw in, it's not gonna come through the other side of the drawer. So, it yeah. It took a long time to figure that out, didn't it? Always seems to be the way. We never, no matter how many screws we buy, we never have the ones we actually need. So we are now at the stage where we can actually paint everything, finally. As you can see there's quite a lot to do, so um, we were thinking it's going to take quite a long time if we were to use paint brushes and rollers. So we thought actually, just for this, we'll invest in a spray gun and hopefully it'll work and make it a lot quicker. Alright, I'm excited to see how this works. <laughs> Fun. Hopefully we're not going to get paint all over the van with our yeah. jerry-rigged painting station. <laughs> yeah. Mad. That's alright, isn't it? The first attempt, Abby. <laughs> Think you've done pretty good? So we were hoping to carry on with the rest of the painting today, but the weather's got other plans and it's really, really windy and quite wet. So annoyingly, we're gonna have to wait until another day. Not actually sure when that's gonna be. Could be a while. So today we are fortunate enough to have a beautiful clear day for once. We've just got everything we've done so far over here. It's drying outside for a change, which is nice. It's not what you want. So many bugs getting on everything today. <laughs> He's just coming to see what you're doing. <laughs> have like a white bee flying around the garden. <laughs> So we're just giving it a quick sand before the next layer. Makes it really nice and smooth because it's quite rough before. Definitely worth doing. We 
you've moved the table saw into the only patch of sunshine so that Abby can be a bit warmer today. It's so cold. <laughs> right, got some strips. Using up all the leftover scraps from the bed. Really down to the dregs now. Yeah. As you can probably tell it's pretty cold today. Um, we've just about managed to finish getting all of the draw fronts ready now to paint so we're going to do that now and hope that it's not too cold for it to dry properly but we've turned the heater on in the van to help them dry so. <laughs> so glad we got that heater in there. It's not an ideal situation is it really? I want to be in there not out here. <laughs> all right let's get started. Degrees in there, and probably what, like two outside. Oh, it's horrendous. <laughs> okay. At least you've got your nice snow boots on. Yeah, they're working the charm. Well, at least it's sunny today, even if it is cold. It's freezing. <laughs> it could be worse though, it could it be could, snowing. Yeah, I guess so. So we don't exactly want to be spray painting right this second. So we thought it might just do a little bit of seasonal change in the decor in the van. We've got a little Christmas tree here. <laughs> and <laughs> that must be bonkers. I've got nothing else this small, so a mushroom it is. Too tall now. No. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. <laughs> We've we got, got to keep watching out for big puddles of water collecting. Right. Um, I don't know how we've managed to so far actually paint these kind of alright in this weather. It's not going too bad, is it? No. So that is finally everything painted and we can actually get everything back into the van and all we've got left to do now is to put all the drawer fronts on and all the knobs, all the catches and stuff like that which hopefully shouldn't take very long. <laughs> it's been a lot of work, especially in this weather. Yeah. So. Got a really nice finish though. Really nice and smooth everywhere. Yeah. It's nice.
we've got cupboard doors all nicely painted ready to go on. We've never put on a cupboard door before so uh, we wanted to make sure we weren't going to make a mistake. So what we've done is do a mock-up with uh, these hinges. We've gone for 165 degree opening hinges. So they open a little bit further than 90 which is quite good because for us what we wanted was that when we opened this door here it will give us a nice access space into that cupboard and then the same for this one that way around. But it's a bit tricky because the gap between the walls here, between the two cupboards, is really, really thin. And we've got full overlay hinges, so by default they would just kind of hit each other when the, when the doors are closed. That wouldn't work. So what we've done is we've worked out we need to add a bit of wood so that when that sits in like that, it should just about go to halfway, just a little bit less than halfway on each side, so there'll be enough space for them to open. And then, uh, yeah, because we didn't want to mess up the cupboard door because the measurements have to be ridiculously precise. Um, what we've done is made a little jig so we can just put that on there and give us the right space to drill the hole and the two screw holes. Today. Was it minus five? And in the van this morning it was minus seven, so Abby refused to come out until we had the heat run at all. So I think it said it was seven degrees last time I checked, so yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> Luxurious, exotic. <laughs> So let's take a quick run through, shall we? So obviously we've got our lovely seat and it's going to have some foam on it in the future. We haven't done that yet. We've got our shoe drawer underneath. Big shoes at the top. Surprising amount of storage actually in the end. It's not too bad, is it? And some sandals at the bottom. We've got some black matting and some coil matting in there just to catch any dirt. And we'll just put a little magnet catch on here just to keep it closed while we're driving. So that's good. We've put another magnet latch on this one and a ball catch at the front. Just keep this one really sturdy because it's quite heavy, this drawer. Can't really hear anything clattering or anything like that. So that's pretty awesome. So down here, what we've done, if we take out the pint glass there, which is quite nice, it's accessible from both sides. We've um, put some draft excluder there just to stop it from rattling around and also to protect the glass as well. So that works pretty well. And we might do that at the bottom if it needs it down there. So yeah. The other thing we've done on this drawer is because it's quite a heavy drawer, we've put some felt pads just under here just to protect the floor a little bit. It does just scrape if you pull it out all the way. Nice click in there. Moving on to our pan drawers. Just put some bits in there just as an example. No catches on these yet, but they will have some on. There we go. We're probably going to have a different storage solution for our plates because they might clatter a bit. But, uh, I haven't got round to that one yet. So we've got our tin foil drawer, which satisfyingly doesn't hit the oven handle or the knobs. That is ridiculous. Which is awesome. And exactly fits two of them side by side. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got our cutlery at the bottom there, and our double drawer idea, which I think works really well. And then what we've done is put some anti-slip mat in this drawer, and actually a lot of the other drawers as well 
worked really well. So that's pretty awesome. So there we go, got the water tank in there, that's going to be raised up so we can still access that patch underneath. And this one, we've just put some baskets in there and some cereal and stuff just to show you what it would be like. So much work. <laughs> That is a result, I think. And we basically have pretty much a kitchen now. Yeah. Just can't use it like one yet. No, not yet. <laughs> Obviously no, nothing's um, plumbed in or the gas isn't hooked up or anything like that yet. But that's why we haven't bolted these units in, because we'll need to take them in and out to do that stuff. So looking good though. Just got to wait for our worktop to go on. It'll be a lot thinner than that. This is just a sample of what we got. So yeah, that's what it will look like. Yeah, it's going to look nice. <laughs> Cool, so I guess that is it for this video, right? Yeah, I suppose so. Don't yeah. forget you can subscribe below and uh, give us a like if you're enjoying our videos. Yeah, and we'll see you in the next one. See you next time. Bye. Bye.